Hi everybody, this is Diane. I'm working on the uh, Garden Binder journals. Today I'm actually working on the pages. This is going to line the end paper of my journal. I've cut it to size and I want to put this photo sleeve on it. It came, let me show you, it came out of a book that I picked up at Salvation Army. And this is the size of it. It had two photo sleeves or compartments on it and you would put your photo in there. I cut it in half and I want to make sure that this isn't going to um, come apart. It looks good now but I did have to cut that so I'm not sure if it's going to stay. So I'm going to stitch this on here and that should that would hold it from coming apart. And I just want to decorate it with this little piece of trim right up here at the top where it was bound into the book. So I, ha I still have my black thread in. Well, I think I'll just do straight stitch. And just sew this on. That is decorated and I'm just going to sew around it on this page. There. Now you can actually see it on the page because of the black thread outlining it. And I have this piece, I think somebody sent this to me in a happy mail, and it was already folded. I think I, I just punched, I don't even remember, but I think I just punched uh, the corners to round them, and it fits perfectly within this little pocket. The sewing machine out of the way. I will glue this right here. That is covered and looking pretty. So let's just start working on the pages. I have all of my pages cut and punched and they're in there. Um, I got all the way to 
9, the index number 9, and I have the pages from the book in there. And I didn't add any other pages beyond that. So after I decorate um, these pages, I'll see if I want to add more or take these indexes out because I don't want to make the book too fat. So this is the this is done with just uh, my plant card from the greenhouse membership club thing. I think it's from the 70s and I just sewed on this library card from Artsology and then a little piece of trim to decorate it. And the back you can glue pictures or whatever on. Then I have this that comes next. So I want to do something to this. Maybe I'll just sew a little piece of this trim on it. This just came from my friend Sarah. right across the top. And that's all. I want to leave this space for you to write on or glue something of your own on there. Then I have this piece, just a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, where are my fabric clusters? I'll just put a little cluster on the edge here. <clears throat> I'm not going to do something to every single page. I want to do is add reinforcements to the original pages because some of them are torn. It's a very old book. I believe this book was from the 60s. So let me grab my reinforcements. some ink over too so I can ink some of these. I guess I've got a few in different colors but I don't have a lot left that are colored so I'm just going to do a bunch in green and make it consistent throughout the book. It's very quick to do. I'm just going to take my distress tool and rub it. A lot of times I like to take a large uh, background stamp and just stamp it in black or brown and then ink it or vice versa, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, to give it a little more detail like, like this. But I'm just going to ink them this time. So in just those few seconds I have 28 reinforcements done. You 
can also just take your pad and you get a much darker look when you do this. shows green because it's a garden book. This is the last page I'm going to do. Last sheet, I guess. I think today was Screaming Baby Day. Not Screaming Baby, Screaming Kid Day at Walmart. I was in, I was working today, <laughs> just, you know, quietly putting up the Hallmark cards, and there was one screaming kid after another there. Some days are like that. One, the first one was, oh, she was just throwing a tantrum. I would have just taken her out to the car, but no, everyone was subjected to it. Voicemail. I don't know if I'll do front and back on all of them, but this one was pretty torn, so I just want to make sure it's going to stay. And it adds a little pop of color, too. So I'll have to color more reinforcements before I'm done because it took more than half a page just to do two pages. Then next I have this card. It has this um, index card that I sewed on it. I've got these really pretty little appliques that I never remember to use. So I am going to glue a little flower applique onto this. And then I will ink that, but this is pretty much done. Um, maybe I'll just, oh, it's a fabric flip. Maybe I will just add a little tab to that. It'd probably be better to do it after it's inked, but I don't want to ink it right now because you've just been watching me play with those tabs and you want to get see me get going on something I'm sure so this was an odd shaped scrap I just cut it in an odd shape and I'm just gonna sew it right there random. So there's that one. Okay. 
this section is about lawns. So these are, I guess, the weeds that your lawn, lawn gets. side here except for this hole. This hole was torn. I've got music paper here. put a little pocket here. I just made it a tuck spot so I can slip something in there. Something like one of these cards that I already sewed fabric to tuck in there. This one is a piece of scrapbook paper that I folded over. Oh. It's my tray of cards. It's got playing cards and index cards and postcards in it. Mostly playing cards and postcards. I have, I have my index cards other places. Maybe I'll use some of these categories cards in this journal. A gnome is good for a, a garden journal. There's a cat sitting in a garden, or sitting in a bunch of flowers anyway. See what we've got for garden cards. And I've got tiny ones. I hoard these beautiful little rose cards, but this is a perfect journal to use them in. I love these tiny little ones. I think somebody sent them to me. This is the kind of journal I've been waiting to do. It is a garden theme, but I can still say anything goes. It's more like a junky type of junk journal than a beautifully styled and themed one. Well, we have birds in gardens, so let's do six birds. Oops. Thank you. 
to a rabbit. I guess that's enough for now. That one's cute. a rusty metal drawer that I bought at the flea market and I spray painted it. So take this and this and just sew them onto the edge here. if you so desire. Something smaller than that. Next I have a piece of wallpaper. I'm just going to leave that as it is. You can do mixed media on this. Nice and sturdy. have another divider, which I've already done stuff to. Just slapping stuff on there. Then we have one of the <clears throat> the garden planner or the garden binder pages that I punched yesterday and a subscriber suggested because this was a three hole punch binder so it affected the way the holes looked when I punched them so she suggested that I add some sort of paper to the edge and then punch again so I did this is a scrap of wallpaper and I'm just going to leave this be as it is I think And this was an extra digital, so this was just something I printed out on my uh, copy paper. This is the fabric that I got at a flea market, or a uh, yard sale. It was cut into pieces to make clothing for stuffed bunnies that this lady made and sold. So I had a stack of these flocked pieces cut into clothing shapes and not made. <clears throat> I'm just going to sew that right there.
Then I have a piece of wrapping paper. This is from Current, and it's a nice, um, sturdy-ish piece of wrapping paper. So for this, let's just add a little rabbit to this flower garden. I'm going to sew him up here. Do you want something else? That can act as a little tab. I have a divider page with just a place to journal on. I'm going to sew something on that. It's a piece of vintage fabric. This is a section about roses. Um, this was sent to me by Manon, I believe. Um, she's French-Canadian, and she sent me these cards with roses and some French quotes, and then she wrote a translation, Con Concentration makes for the best superhero. Pages. These are gorgeous ones because they have roses on them. page is a page of the vintage computer paper. These are perforated, but I'm going to leave them there. Um, maybe I'll just put some washi tape there to help prevent them from tearing. pink and white floral.
and that's all I'll do to this page. I think it must be time to add another pocket. of this funny fiber. Trim. Probably an upholstery trim. kitty cat in there. No, we are not at the end of the bobbin. Oh, the spool got tangled. Just put a new spool of thread on there. over here so I can get my face right up there and see where to put the thread. going to be okay now. Next I have an envelope. All I had to do was I had to trim this edge off so it's open here. But that's okay because it'll be in the binder right there. Um, so what will I do with this? Maybe a little collage. Or maybe I should just let it leave it alone for you to collage on.
a little scrap of wallpaper. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put these pieces and some extra pieces inside the envelope so whoever buys this can make their own collage. I did some tearing and selecting of pieces. But there it is. You can collage on this envelope. I have another divider with a journal card stitched on it. I put I left three pages in this section because it's about shrubs and look at these beautiful illustrations. While I'm putting these on, have you seen uh, the movie Mamma Mia? Does anybody out there love ABBA music? I love ABBA music. And I used to have all of their albums. And I've seen the movie and Mamma Mia too, but it was really fun to see it live. Um, and hear the music again. I have to say, I like Pierce Brosnan, but I didn't understand why they cast him in a role that he had to sing. He can't sing. So this guy that I saw yesterday in that part, um, he sang those songs beautifully. Nothing against Pierce. Not everybody can sing. I just didn't understand it. And I have another piece of wrapping paper with a flap. So I think I will sew something to the flap. Didn't want to put a floral card on here because there's a lot of competition on this wrapping paper for flowers. Oh. Oops, 
the matter with this? I have to turn it off. Turn it back on. There was no stitch registering. And again, there's no stitch registering. And I don't know how to register a stitch on this. There, it was because the bobbin winder got pushed in. Don't know why. I didn't wind the bobbin. And I'm glad I could solve that mystery. this page and you would turn it over and you'd have a little flap and I have a piece of this Tim Holtz the wallpaper cards that he has and this I didn't cut this down at all it was already this size I just punched some holes in it got this pretty piece of stretch trim that Sarah sent me so I'll just sew a little piece of that on there stretch lace I still have the little box of goodies that she sent me sitting right here on the table so I might as well use some of it This is a piece of cardstock that I that was already cut to this size. Trying to find a little, just a little snippet that, let's just put this one on there. Here's a card with some more journaling space on it. And two more pages from the original. And then another piece of wallpaper, and I'm just going to leave that. I 
this gorgeous scrapbook paper, which I think this is what I used on the uh, inside cover, the in end paper. So I folded this up. I'm going to sew that this side as a pocket. because I need a pocket to put a matchbook notebook in that we made in a previous video. So there's a pocket for that. of this. It's a piece I got at the flea market last year. I think. Maybe it was something I got this year. Doesn't really matter. just a decoration. It's another tab. We're getting to the end of the added in pages that I put in. Now this was a 12 by 12 paper with a phrase in the middle. So I just cut it in half and then I had to cut off some of the top and bottom but this will be in the binder like this so you can read Create a Life You Love. I'll make a little tuck spot on this one. Add a little bit of this ruffled fabric to the top of this side.
So the funny thing was about that trip that my sister and I took was we were both so busy in the weeks, months leading up to it. We, um, she heard about it, asked me if I wanted to go, and I said yes, so we signed up for it. And then before I went to Alaska, she reminded me that I had to send a check to the organizer of, the, of our little group that went on the trip. It was a bus trip, but we had, I think, eight people in our little group. That it was some ladies that my sister knows. But then, you know, the bus was full of other people, too. So anyway, I had to send a check. And then I went on my Alaska trip, so of course I wasn't thinking about this. So last week, my sister messaged me something about the trip. And I was like, oh, glad you reminded me because I completely forgot about it. I'm not going to do anything to this. So... I asked her, where is this show anyway? Because I didn't even know where we, were, where we were going. We went to the Phantom of the Opera a year or so ago in Buffalo. And I knew this was a, I think this trip was a little further, but I couldn't remember where it was. So she looked it up, and that's when she found out that we were actually going to a dinner theater in the town in Maryland where her son lives, <laughs> in Columbia, Maryland. <laughs> we didn't even know we were going to his town. So she messaged him and told him, and he's he was away. He was, he was away while we were there on vacation. Went to the beach with his family. So that was funny. We were so close to his house when the bus got off the exit and pulled up to where the theater was. Barbara recognized the area. And she said, Oh my gosh, we are so close to Rich's house. <laughs> when she told him we were going to Columbia to see a show, he said, What the heck, Mom? <laughs> so his, his wife grew up in that area. So she'd been to this um, dinner theater many times. Rich has never been there. Maybe he's not into musicals. I don't know, but Angela's been there a lot. I have two more pages. This came out of a card book. I'm going to put a reinforcer on the back of this. And I'm not going to do anything else to either of these. Except maybe add, hmm, let me see, this, this uh, didn't fit properly as punched, so I had to punch it again. So I just wanted to make sure I know which hole is the one I want, and I'll put a reinforcer on it to disguise the big hole. I'm going to close this book up and see where we're at as far as thickness goes. I haven't added all the cards and things to it yet. So that's not too bad, but I think maybe I should remove these back tabs because I don't I didn't put any pages in them. What do you think? Should I add some more pages? Because we are this is where I left off. Let's take all these out. And like I said I still have to add cards. I think I could add a few more pages. So, I can include this tab.
and I'll, I'll include two more tabs with some pages in between them. But I'm going to stop this video for now because it's almost an hour. So thank you for hanging out with me if you stuck with me this long. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I was doing to decorate the pages of this binder journal. I'm having a lot of fun making this journal. I have a second one to do and then after that I'm going to do two sewing binder journals. So stay tuned for all of that and I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.